This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Samsung Captivate Glide on AT&T. Now, don't be fooled by the Captivate name. This isn't just a Captivate rewarmed over with a special trick, which is the QWERTY keyboard here. It has all new CPU inside. It's a dual-core NVIDIA Tegra 2 CPU running at 1 GHz. It has a gig of RAM. It runs Android OS 2.3.5 Gingerbread with Samsung's TouchWiz software on top of it, and it has an 8 megapixel camera. So it's definitely a significant update from the original Captivate that came out a year ago. A very popular phone, which is probably why AT&T and Samsung want to go with that name again. Like the Captivate, it has a Super AMOLED display. This is a 4-inch display. Resolution is 800 by 480 stand, That's standard for Super AMOLED displays. Not Super AMOLED Plus, by the way. This is just Super AMOLED. It sells for $149 with contract, which isn't bad. And a few things that you're giving up by doing that is you're going with the 1 GHz CPU, dual core, which, gee, that's really pretty powerful. NVIDIA makes a nice CPU, but these days we're seeing 1.2 to 1.5 GHz on the most expensive $199 to $249 phones. And the camera, that 8 megapixel camera in the rear, can shoot 720p video, but not 1080p video. So we take a look around the phone. Up here you have your 1.3 megapixel video chat camera. It comes with quick light preloaded. You can also use Skype or Google Chat for video chat if you want to. We've got the standard capacitive buttons here that do backlight when the display is on. Up top here we have something that is reminiscent of the Captivate and the original Galaxy phones, which is the sliding cover for the micro USB port up here. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack conveniently located up top. Volume rocker on the side. Nothing down here. This is a little grab spot where you reach to pull the plastic cover off. This side we just have the power button. Samsung loves to put the power buttons on the side. And on the back we have the textured plastic here and then the 8 megapixel camera with the LED flash and you've got your speaker grill over here. And it's a pretty basic looking phone. In terms of styling it's not going to stand out a whole lot. It's, it's not one of Samsung's flagship phones but it's not a bad looking phone either. It weighs only 5.2 ounces. Samsung is good at making things light. And the keyboard opens with a nice springy feel. You can see that's spring assisted. And it's a big roomy keyboard, which is pretty nice. The one thing about it is I turn it like this, you can see pretty much no key height. In order to keep it thin and, and to keep the slider as small as possible, you have very little travel here. It's not a bad keyboard, though. It's not horrible. For those of you who really hate using on-screen keyboards, especially on, by today's standards, a smaller 4-inch display, this keyboard is certainly easier to use than typing on screen. And you've got shortcuts here like www and .com. You've got Android buttons right here. It's your Alt that activates everything that's masked in blue. Oversized space bar, that's nice. We've got an embedded D-pad right here with the OK key. So not bad at all for those of you who like to text or just hate on-screen keyboards. If you take a look inside the phone, yank off the plastic back, which isn't as thin as the Galaxy S2 covers actually. So we take a look at the back here, you can see this interesting little plane here. To me, I'm guessing that might be NFC, but neither Samsung nor AT&T are saying anything about that. Take a look inside. Here's your micro SD card slot. There's no card included. Phone has 8 gigs of internal storage. Not all of that's available for your use, but that's a good start, and you can use high capacity cards with this. SIM card slot, and here's your 1650 milliamp battery. That's a pretty good capacity battery for an HSPA Plus 21 megabit per second 4G phone. So when you take a look at your desktop here, you've got the standard stuff you expect from Android and TouchWiz, multiple home screens here. We've got the shortcut to managing wireless radios. You can also pull from the top here and get to those things. Very convenient. And you'll see any notifications you have there. There's Samsung's task manager. It tells you how many apps are running. Weather widget, stuff like that. All comes standard with it. And in terms of applications, you see that it scrolls around pretty quickly. And it's an infinite scroll. It keeps looping around and everything is in alphabetical order. There's no more separation of downloaded apps from the built-in applications, which I actually prefer. In terms of software bundle here, we've got all shared DLNA, that's Samsung's DLNA, and it also does a HDMI out to an HDTV using an optional MHL adapter. It's about $20 adapter that's usually available at carrier stores. You plug it into the micro USB port, plug your full-size HDMI cable and the phone's charger into that adapter, and it can output and mirror to the TV, monitor, projector, what have you. 
We've got Kindle pre-installed, a demo of Asphalt 6, and the usual AT&T software like Yellow Pages Mobile, their barcode scanner, Family Map, AT&T Navigator, so on. Facebook is pre-installed. Flash Player is not, but you can download that for free from the market. We've got AT&T Live TV. It's powered by Moby TV. It's $10 a month or $4 for a day pass, and you can watch streaming TV shows on that. And we've got the usual Samsung goodies like their Mini Diary, their Memo application, their Social Networking Social Hub, which is pretty nice. The voice recorder built into, and the usual Google sta standard apps like YouTube Player, Gmail, GTalk, Maps, and Navigation. We've also got Quick Office on board. This is the full version. It works with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and PDFs for viewing and PDFs. And so you can see you can create a new document if you want. And it's the usual interface for that. You can type along with the keyboard. So we've got the hardware keyboard, which is nice for typing. And then if you hit the menu button, you can see various formatting options here. Insert graphics, change your fonts, that kind of stuff. And you've also got your standard Android keyboard for touch input if you want. And there's also swipe. You can see here. Got the Samsung keypad, swipe, and the Android keyboard. And there's the swipe keyboard, which is bigger and easier to use, though it does cover more of the screen. Phone has Google Maps, and it's compatible with the latest version 6. It actually gives you indoor navigation and indoor maps. So we're going to take a look at a Home Depot, because Home Depot seems to really be participating in that. And you can see there's our neighborhood Home Depot popping open with all the aisles marked and departments. GPS gets it fixed quickly, by the way, and has been reliable in our tests. Thanks to the dual core NVIDIA 1 GHz CPU, you can play Tegra Zone games, a selection of about 10 or so games, but they're pretty nice, graphically intensive 3D games. And this can play video, but the, the problem with the Tegra 2 has been it doesn't like to play 1080p high profile. You're going to have to stick to 1080p standard profile or 720p. If you try to play a high profile 1080p video, it just says, sorry, can't play this. So there's that. It just won't do it. In terms of calling, the phone has good reception. It's about similar to other Sam recent Samsung phones, I should say, on, on AT&T, like the, uh, the Skyrocket, the Galaxy S2. And then it has HSPA+, plus 21 megabits per second. And we've gotten download speeds anywhere from 3 to 6 megs, which is pretty standard for our area. And upload speeds have been about 1.5 megabit per second on average. You see you've got your giant on-screen dialer here, pretty easy to use with quick access to the call logs, contacts, and favorites. That's pretty much standard Android stuff right there. Voice quality on this is very good for both incoming and outgoing voice. Clear, sharp, full, and pretty good noise canceling as well. Phone has the usual Android WebKit web browser, customized by Samsung. You can see it offers uh, motion control. It's got all the latest TouchWiz gizmos, and that includes things like panning and by tilting the phone back and forth and all that sort of thing if you like to use that. It also has independent browser brightness so you can set the browser to be brighter or darker than the phone in general. And everything looks pretty bright and colorful thanks to the Super AMOLED display. Text looks pretty sharp to me. Some people complain about the pentile matrix that underlies Super AMOLED displays but I find this Contrasty, not overly blue the way some Super AMOLED displays can be, and easy enough to read. And you can see it's very responsive for scrolling all around. And we'll check out some Adobe Flash playback. We'll play our HTC Vivid versus Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket video. Two LTE phones on AT&T's network. Speaking of which, this is not an LTE phone. And we're doing this over AT&T's HSPA Plus network. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to compare... The speaker's pretty loud, too. Let's see where the volume is about three-quarters of the way up. It's loud. And here we popped out to full-screen mode, 480p. Still streaming over AT&T's network. So it plays very well. The controls are a little bit fussy, and that, that makes the uh, Tegra 2 seem a little bit, well, last year, and it is actually a little bit last year. The latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 1.2, 1.5 gigahertz CPUs, uh, the latest TIO maps, and Samsung's Exynos CPU are all a little bit more responsive when it comes to actually controlling flash playback. 
So for $149, if you're looking for an Android QWERTY phone, it's actually a pretty nice phone, and it's not at all a budget model. You've got a fast, C pretty fast CPU in here. You've got a really nice, colorful display, decent build quality, large keyboard, and it's certainly more high-end than the Samsung Double Time, which is a very budget Android QWERTY phone. You can see there's the difference in the display quality and resolution here. And so what you've got here is another one of those, well, kind of unusual QWERTY designs that AT&T seems to love. And this guy opens up, and then it switches to the internal display. Kind of reminds me of a feature phone from several years ago. But much duller display, uh, more plasticky kind of design. So, so you definitely get a more up-to-date phone with this. This isn't just a rewarming of the Samsung Epic 4G on, on Sprint or the, the Stratosphere where you're sticking with single-core CPU kind of thing. With some of the older models, you get a modern dual-core CPU here as well. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review of the Samsung Captivate Glide Android QWERTY phone. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.